Hello everyone and welcome to another Amigos Play. This is Aaron and we are going to begin our celebration of the march to Wrestlemania by uh, counting down some of the various Amiga wrestling games in the next two weeks. Uh, Wrestlemania will be April 2nd. And so tonight we're going to look at the first offering on our list, WWF European Rampage. Uh, European Rampage was a game that came out in 1992. It was published by Ocean and developed by an outfit called a Arc Developments. Uh, Arc had a few notable games. They did a lot of conversions. They did Crackdown, Dragon Breed, Forgotten Worlds, um, Nick Faldo, uh, R-Type 2, and The Simpsons games. So they had a couple decent games to their credit. Uh, <clears throat> this ain't one of them. Uh, this game is quite horrible. And I have been trying to debate on a way to present this in a way that would not only be bo not boring, but would be interesting. And so what we're going to do is, uh, there's not going to be a lot of gameplay in this. There's going to be a lot of gameplay footage of me basically cheating to get past these various teams. Because I've found this game virtually unplayable. And uh, <clears throat> that's pretty much the word on the street. These are, this game's horrible in every way. But the content's interesting. And uh, since this is the first stop on our road to WrestleMania, I thought I'd give it a shot. So here you've got four of the luminaries of the WWF. You've got Macho Man, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, and Bret Hitman Hart. Uh, this game, again, came out in 1991. And so, uh, excuse me, 1992. Now, this wasn't the first WWF game for the system. Uh, obviously, we covered the very first game, which was um, the uh, uh, Micro League Wrestling, which is uh, a different sort of bad. <clears throat> I like the fact that this game includes a lot of different tag teams. In fact, I like everything about this game except for the actual game. As you'll see here, I uh, it's almost impossible to kick out. I'm a pretty good button smasher, and it was <laughs> instantly was pinned. And that's when I knew right away. I was like, okay, we're going to change the way this works. And so what we're going to do is tour this game uh, and see what all it has to offer in terms of the visuals. And I'll go into a little backstory on some of the wrestlers. Um... There's a code that you can type in. It's funny, I've got it memorized now. 147-85963 and enter on your keypad. And you can pretty much knock these guys over with a feather. Uh, the Nasty Boys, by the way, uh, whom we just pinned. And we'll see all these teams again a lot. Uh, a couple guys from Minnesota started in the AWA. And uh, they actually got a lot more famous than I would have anticipated when I first saw them. Uh, they... Uh, are just big burly guys and uh, I do they did the, sing their own theme so now you've got money incorporated here and you notice that this is the European tour so we're starting in England um, <clears throat> on these matches I'll try to tangle with them a little bit before I uh, finish them but uh, to be honest with you there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, there's not a whole lot that could be done before <laughs> it, gets, it gets boring but uh, um, so what you do in this, it's it's tags only. Maybe this would be better as a as a, as a two player game, but as a one player game, I, I mean, literally, I mean, it, I, I I think it's unplayable. I mean, I don't know who could have been good at this. I'd like to meet that person. Um, so uh, you tag out with just walking up and hitting the button. Same thing with going to the top rope. All that stuff's irrelevant. Uh, really, it's almost impossible to pull off moves in this game. If you want the honest truth. Uh, it's just it's incredibly difficult to play <clears throat> I uh, this game followed uh, the uh, WWF WrestleMania game that came out in 91 and in almost every way that's a better game uh, and that game's horrible don't get me wrong but uh, uh, it's it's easier it's easier to play than this this is virtually unplayable that one's playable to a point where you can't win um, You've got Earthquake and Typhoon pictured there, uh, Natural Disasters. Uh, Earthquake was a pretty impressive guy. He st got his career started sumo and was an American uh, fighting sumo in Japan. Uh, and I remember hearing an interesting story from one time where in, in, in Japan, uh, sumos don't leave. And uh, he got sick of being a uh, one of the job boys for the sumos. And so... After a match, I believe it was in uh, Yokohama, but it could have been in Tokyo, but uh, he literally had a car waiting 
ran out the back door in his sumo stuff, hopped in a car, drove directly to their airport, and left before they knew what had happened. Because they, they, they don't like to let you go, <laughs> apparently. So he had a long career until I believe he succumbed to cancer uh, a few years back. It's funny, I, I, it's not that funny actually, but a lot of the fellas in this game have passed away, uh, including Macho Man and uh, Mr. Perfect is in one of the other games uh, that he's gone. And of course, uh, Road Warrior Hawk. Uh, who is in this game is gone. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's it's sort of it's sort of sad that uh, so many wrestlers from that era have passed away, but uh, that's just the way it goes. And I will say most both these gentlemen are still around. Uh, Ted DiBiase had a long and storied career uh, before he got to the WWF, and then once he got there, he gained a lot of uh, notoriety for being the Million Dollar Man character. And IRS uh, Mike Rotunda was a uh, uh, a popular wrestler years before in the WWF with a tag team called, uh, I think it was the U.S. Express, him and Barry Windham, and uh, I believe they captured the belts at one point, only to lose them to uh, Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik, and then Barry Windham had a really successful run in the NWA, uh, Rotunda had a semi-successful run uh, with the Varsity Club, and then a bunch of other horrible failed gimmicks. Uh, until he until uh, he came back, they ended up. They both came back eventually, and uh, Barry Windham worked as the new Black Jacks with John uh, Layfield, and uh, of course Rotunda was IRS, which I probably his most famous character. Uh, but uh, he was a good, competent worker. His uh, uh, um, family uh, is very, actually both guys' families were quite prominent in sports. Barry Windham, his dad was Black Jack Mulligan. Uh, his brother was Kendall Wyndham, who had gained some notoriety back in the old NWA days. But uh, so you can see, we're we're going through a lot of these different teams, um, and uh, um, like over and over, there aren't that many. Um, you can see that the venue changes so often. There's a little bit of, uh, of uh, there's a little bit of a uh, you know changing of the of the way the venue looks. And and, the, and Sean Mooney's little screen there, you can see in the background that you've got the. Now that we're in France, you've got the uh, French. Um, I guess the name of the arena back there, and there's a picture of uh, France. And I think if you scroll over, yeah, you can see the WWF is in, has a French flag behind it. Um, <clears throat> the WWF had so many games over the years, and uh, it's funny how many were incredibly bad. Uh, really, almost every game was not good <coughs> up to the point that they got to uh, an arcade game called WWF Superstars then they had a good string of decent games uh, WWF Superstars was a really fun game and it led to a uh, a game called WWE WrestleFest excuse me uh, WrestleFest is one of the all-time greats. I, I owned WrestleFest, and it's a tremendous game. Uh, probably the peak of their of their success. And then they also had the WWF uh, WrestleMania, the arcade game, which is quite popular. Sort of a Mortal Kombat style game. Excuse me, guys. Um, you can see we're screwing through this. Uh, and something else I like about this is. Uh, yeah, when you lose, you get a couple credits to come back. <laughs> we, uh, I got sick of fighting the nasty boys. When I when I initially loaded this up, I had this I'd played before, and I knew uh, what I was in for. I mean, to go over the gameplay a little bit, there's very little, uh, there's very little actual moves in the game. All the guys do the same stuff. And uh, locking up is ridiculous, as you can see I'm trying to do here. Uh, it's uh, almost impossible to lock up or hit a guy off the top rope or do anything. It's, they're they're different. I mean, look at that. You couldn't be any more well-placed. <clears throat> um, you have to be very precise. Uh, to run off the ropes, you tap forward twice, and they'll take off around in. And you can do a move, but you almost always miss. Uh, to uh, You can drop an elbow or stomp. Those are pretty much your most successful moves. Um, locking up is just really tough, and it's uh, uh, it, it, they just didn't put a lot of effort into this. I mean, this is the embodiment of a half-assed approach. And what sucks is you've got a the the actual uh, presentation is not bad, you know. 
but the game is just I mean if we look at the even if you compare it to the last game which we'll get into that when we uh, <clears throat> when I cover that one uh, next week but uh, the presentation looks so 8-bit uh, it's so low and ugly the the the, uh, the view is not good of the ring you can't really tell the, there's no depth hardly um, I mean, really, anything could have been done better than this. I mean, <clears throat> the uh, it's just it's a waste. The music is is sad as well. Uh, I I assume this was a, a, a grab, a money grab. You know, it's it's odd to me that uh, uh, that uh, they would release a European Rampage tour game. I, I assume they released this for the Amiga on the Express. Uh, notion that the, the WWF was, ha was having quite a uh, quite a run uh, in uh, in that year, in, uh, you know, in that era in the UK and Britain was quite popular. <clears throat> um, this thing was <laughs> amazingly released on a few other formats, not too many of them really. The Atari ST and the C64 and the PC, um, which I, I to be honest with, I never saw any of those. I can't imagine the being any better, to be, to be honest with you. But, uh, you. You can't do much to it. So here we have in a title match, me uh, fighting the LOD, uh, the Legion of Doom, or as they were known in the NWA, the Road Warriors, a, uh, probably one of the most storied teams in history of wrestling, two big bruisers from Minnesota. <coughs> um, Hawk passed away a few years back, and. They were not treated well in their last few years by the WWF and the various places they worked. So we're going to see what it looks like when you end this sucker. It took everything I could there to kick out. And I was like, you know, let's just quit, quit while we're ahead and just cheat and win. Uh, the, uh, you have to basically, when you get down, you have to hit the uh, fire button as fast as you can. I mean, rock it fast. It's real tough. Uh, these, these, uh, these WWF games were joystick busters for, for sure. And I'm going to try to hit this guy, but I'm, it's, like I said, he has to be in the perfect spot. And also, I found it quite odd that the European Rampage Tour ended with your title match being not in Europe, but in Madison Square Garden, uh, which is strange to me. So, here we go. We're going to take the pin here. And this is inexplicable. <laughs> Jimmy Hart offers to hand you the belts and to be your manager. <clears throat> Uh, so I assume you're turning heel at this point if you weren't already. Uh, of course, he managed Bret Hart for quite a while. But uh, uh, I was hoping it would come up with a thing that would give you a yes or no answer. But it, it didn't. And then that's it. <laughs> Game over. So it's abrupt and to the point. So this is classic Ocean, in my opinion. Just another one of those. So anyway, again, not much to it. But I thought we'd have a quick look. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And... Uh, don't play it. I don't recommend this game at all. It's quite bad, but at least you know how it ends. So, this is Aaron of the Amigos. You guys have a good day. Adios.